Welcome back everybody, it's Paul Maglev here with Viaduct Designer. If you're a frequent viewer of my channel, you might be wondering to yourself why I went from having live commentary over game footage to live webcam footage over game footage to just a pre-recorded audio placed atop some pre-recorded video game footage. And the reason is that this is a game that requires a lot more thinking. I couldn't articulate my feelings and sentiments about how I felt and what I had to say while simultaneously building a bridge. Even though that sounds pretty simple, uh, now that I think about it. But that's beside the point. The point is, I felt this was a way for me to get back into the swing of things, and I realized that it took a lot more time than I actually expected it to. But aside from that, uh, we have to move forward. I've only got 18 minutes, 51 seconds, and 20 out of 30 frames to actually describe everything that's happened uh, so far in this video and uh, what's taking place over the course of this semester, so let's just hop to it. Viaduct Designer, kind of a mediocre game, but it's still a train game, so I like it in that respect. Also appreciates its references to other uh, video games and its kind of whimsical charm that it presented to me when I first stumbled across this game many years ago. But just take my uh, word for a grain of salt and nothing else. Anyway, let's just move on to our uh, next uh, thing to address. Basically, why haven't I posted any videos for months on end? Uh, anything substantive, really. And the reason for that is a lot of things have uh, basically uh, taken priority or have higher priority than posting videos online. And if there was nothing else, there would probably be nothing for me to do except those videos online, and I'm pretty sure you'd be a lot happier about that, and I think I'd be okay with that, but I still have other things to take care of. No, Mainly yeah. school, I also have to deal with uh, the fact that my software uh, subscriptions have expired for Adobe, which is a real pain, and I don't want to pay $20 a month for that because that's the cheapest offer they got, and uh, my school isn't going to pay for it anymore because uh, I don't have any use for it for uh, the rest of the... Uh, time that I'm at university. I also had to deal with some other issues like the fact that the dog died, for example, and other such things that I've probably mentioned in some capacity previously. I don't want to go into too much detail about that because it's something I don't want to talk about, but it's something I need to remember. But yeah, uh, let's see what happened this semester. So it took ENVS 190. In retrospect, not one of my better ideas, but I feel that it's made me a better person somehow. I can't exactly describe and articulate how. And basically, we were just trying to use our knowledge of CEQA to recreate an environmental impact report for a project taking place in my town called the 237 Industrial Center, named after the uh, interstate that it crosses by. Uh, uh, interstate, I mean Highway 237, that's right. It's a highway, not a interstate. Anyway, so I was responsible with the task of answering the Appendix G questions for the section on transportation, and there was quite a few questions on that, so it was kind of labor-intensive to have to work on that. Uh, the main issue with the project, though, was that prime farmlands could have been used instead to create more burrowing owl habitats, but instead they're just going to build an industrial center, part of which is going to very likely be a data center, which the data center itself isn't going to have that much of an impact traffic-wise or any of those sorts of things, but it's it's the other portion of the sites uh, that's kind of a pain because uh, that land is going to become uh, light industrial uh, facilities that go along with that data center, which I don't necessarily agree with, uh, because uh, it obviously could have gone to much more natural use, uh, because we're running out of open space uh, down in the uh, Santa Clara County. But I guess it was already ordained uh, in the uh, city's general plan where uh, 
existing habitats for conservation was going to commence or uh, perpetuate onwards into the future and what was going to be developed and I wasn't there to have a say in that because that took place in high school and I was busy trying to get my AP exams taken care of and all that not dealing with all the city politics of that sort of thing but yeah that was really disappointing I tried my best to try to stop it uh, within my own capacities I submitted a public comment during one of the uh, planning commission hearings. The first one uh, really got my class excited and enthusiastic. I broke the ice because we were like the only group of people uh, with environmental interests that actually wanted to try to stop this project in some capacity or come, come up with a compromise that would uh, allow both parties to have their cake and eat it too in some way. But uh, uh, the city council didn't budge uh, the project got approved. There was an appeal by uh, the Los Esteros Critical Energy Facility because they still didn't feel satisfied with the environmental impact report that was posted, which was a despicable mess that would have uh, gotten very likely an F in my class if someone had actually submitted that in its entirety because it was so disgusting and poorly written out. It was also kind of confusing because it was a project composed of two different options, which kind of muddies the waters and makes it hard to understand what the project's supposed to be about. Because it's either this thing or that thing, and I've never encountered something like that before. And neither has my teacher, nor the city, and I'm pretty sure this entire county hasn't had to deal with this kind of nonsense, but I'm kind of dwelling too much on the point. Second time around, uh, during the, uh, the hearings, I mean, the, uh, during the appeals with the LECEF, I got to submit another public comments, but I was too tired and, uh, dehydrated and hungry because I hadn't prepared for actually being able to meet this commission on that day because that was the same day I was working on applying for graduation and I hadn't prepared to stay in downtown for the rest of the evening so I was completely exhausted from spending a long day getting some things done like filing for graduation and I had not prepared in any capacity whatsoever to actually formulate my argument to present to uh, the planning commission slash uh, the city council during the uh, second discussion on the matter in the City Hall uh, for the 237 Industrial Center project. In ENVS 154, we learned about sustainable food systems, which are a lot more complicated to design and successfully operate than I would have expected. It's not just about being ecologically sustainable, it's about economic sustainability as well as social sustainability. Specifically, you need to be able to be economically, I mean, ecologically sustainable by implementing environmentally friendly practices that take advantage of the natural surfaces that take place within the surrounding environment and preserving uh, as much natural habitat surrounding your farm area as possible to maximize those benefits as well as using natural processes to maximize uh, food outputs and reduce food waste. Economic sustainability of a food system is achieved when all of the farm workers are able to be equitably compensated for the work they put into producing foodstuffs and other farm materials to the public. And when the public is able to afford enough of those foodstuffs and other natural resources to actually maintain healthy lifestyles. Strangely enough, the most difficult part is actually uh, social sustainability of food systems because in order to be socially sustainable, farmers and consumers need to directly interact with each other in a continuous dialogue. In this dialogue, a two-way conversation is achieved between farmers and consumers, one in which consumers are able to describe what they want and how they want it, and farmers are able to describe what they can offer, how they produced it, and how to maximize the usage potential of the foods that they sell. 
In exchange, farmers will accept the suggestions and advice from consumers as to what to produce, and consumers will receive a newfound respect for where their food comes from, better appreciate what processes go into this production, and make more informed decisions as consumers. The labs were tough in this course, but it was only a self-inflicted sort of difficulty because everybody forgot what the instructions were the day of the labs, so we would have read the instructions the night before or the week before, and the day of we'd completely forget and we'd ask the teacher, hey, what are we supposed to do? And she's like, well, do the lab, but how do we do the lab, teacher? And she's like, but just do the lab. And, uh, and uh, we were kind of disappointed in that respect, but we still pulled through. Everything was fine. In the end, the paper dirt uh, turned out really nice for that course, I think. And uh, I mentioned that I filed for graduation. That was a bit of a pain in the neck to kind of schedule and work out. And it completely undermined my ability to go and say something at the appeals uh, with the planning commission or whatever, as I had intended. But I guess it wasn't that big a deal in retrospect, and I really should have just been more prepared. Uh, the other thing I did that I had to work on this semester, which really took a lot of time out of my week, uh, was actually getting a job. That's the word I'm looking for. The Department of Rehabilitation is primarily a government agency that helps people with disabilities get on the track towards employment or achieving employment. And if they had basically deemed that I wasn't actively looking for work or hadn't gotten a job, basically uh, they wouldn't cover my tuition anymore. So I was like, yep, I gotta do this. So I had to go spend some time with some uh, people in the private and public sector who were able to help me out. And all of a sudden, one day, after weeks on end of trying to look for a, a job, someone actually responds back to me. I get the interview, and before I know it, I have a job in retail. Which I never thought I'd ever be able to do, considering my lack of sociable skills. But somehow I was able to get that, and I was able to do fine throughout the overwhelming Christmas season we had, uh, which really ramped up starting on Black Friday and really didn't die out until New Year's and over the course of uh, my time from October to December when I was working during that time frame I'm still working for the same place now but it's way less uh, intensive but during uh, October through December I can tell you that I got sick twice First one was probably from one of the customers at work, because there, I'm pretty sure there was this lady who was coughing vehemently, and she wasn't really doing a good job of covering herself up. Then again, I don't do much of a good job either. And the other one probably got from my brother, because his call that he got from work when the uh, heating system at his job went out, and it was a kind of uh, call that uh, had a very long persistent cough that would last a well after a week after most of the symptoms had gone away. And I had contracted that, and that was kind of disappointing. But I feel a lot better now. I still have a bit of a cough, but I'm probably not as prone to transmitting as I was previously. Maybe I should see a doctor about that. Anyway... Here's for the details that you probably wanted to hear about most, what I did with model trains over the course of this semester. And what I did over the course of this semester was do a few things. Mainly it was just splurging on new model trains and stuff. But I also uh, had to lay out all the trains uh, for Christmas and stuff, and uh, it was a bit of a challenge this time around because I was being reminded of difficulties that I had basically passed uh, down the road into the future that I hadn't addressed. Uh, mainly, like, technical issues, trying to get things to function properly. Uh, dealing with, uh, a larger layout of track and garden scale, which kind of, uh, makes it more difficult to transmit electricity across farther distances. Uh, I'm assuming because there isn't enough, uh, 
there isn't enough current, even though there's enough voltage or something like that. That's and some of my uh, equipment needs to be kind of livened up and improved. The other thing that I did was actually get some LEGO train stuff that I really wanted to go into more detail about, but maybe I'll have to elaborate in a future video. Actually, no, we still have time. LEGO had produced a series of model trains in a collection they called My Own Train back in 2001 through 2004, and there were quite a few things that I was able to get from that uh, collection of stuff that I wasn't able to for the last decade or so, so I was really satisfied to actually stumble across that at a discount. I had received these items in their discounted state from someone I had met over at one of the toy shows that I visited during the uh, semester, in which I purchased another item from the same person. This item specifically was LEGO's original holiday train set, not to be mistaken for their more recent rendition of a holiday train set, which I also have. But this is the original 9 volt one that has been out of production for at least 10 years or so. I was really satisfied to actually get that. It wasn't complete, obviously, but luckily I had the instructions laying around, and I should be able to just take some of the pieces from my collection and just uh, rebuild it from there. I'll need to do the same thing for some of the uh, other LEGO trains listed under uh, that same My Own Train collection because uh, there are some pieces that are uh, kind of missing, but there are some extra pieces that are really appreciated getting for a real discount, like the uh, motorized uh, trucks or bogies, because those things are expensive. I mean, oh my gosh, I look at BrickLink and the, the, the prices that you pay, you pay for the same thing for a fine-tuned piece of equipment, mint condition, for a completely different scale of model trains, and it's just ridiculous. But yeah, I did that. And I felt really satisfied about that. At this point in time, the only thing I think I need to do is take the LEGO sets that I've acquired that are train themed and improve them aesthetically as best as I can so that they can be showcased online to kind of fulfill an obligation that I set for myself to make last year the, uh, year of the Lego train, I guess, or the year of the Lego train scale, because each year there's a new theme to my channel that I like to showcase, but I think that's beside the point. The point is I should showcase it to you so that you get to see some of it for yourself, because where's the fun in just keeping it to myself? So yeah, but I think that's going to be uh, pretty much all there is to it, as far as I can tell. I will see you all in the next video, and until then, uh, take care, stay awesome, stay true to yourself, and remember to never give up. And uh, was there anything else I wanted to say? Because we got like, I don't know, a few seconds left? Yeah, I can't think of anything. Just take care, everyone, and have a happy new year.